welcome. It's Easter, the 31st day of March in the year 2024. And this is the worship for Easter for Ascension Lutheran Church in Littleton, Colorado, a suburb of Denver, Colorado. I have the joy of being the pastor of this church. And I'm delighted that you have come to join us on this holiest of days. We were able to hear, first of all, Mike Zender on our wonderful, our powerful organ, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
we make our beginning for this service in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we have a treat because you're able to listen to the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians as their rendition of Jesus Christ is risen today is sung.
we come to our gracious Lord, the one who died and who rose, and we confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Jesus Christ, who died, rose. And he has come for us that we also would have eternal life. Through faith in him that he covered our sins by faith in him, that he triumphed over the grave and rose again. Faith in him, that we are people who will live forever. That faith is based upon this truth, that Jesus Christ came to forgive sins, your sins and mine. May you have joy on this day that your sins are washed away, forgiven by a Lord who dies for sins and rises in righteousness. Be at peace and have joy. You are forgiven. Amen. Today my sermon is titled The Power of the Easter Promise. It is based on Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly Two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. I heard an account about a nice wooden bookcase that was living in a living room and how that bookcase taught a lesson to that family about the power of a promise. You see, a couple bought a leather sofa some years ago. And when they bought it, the company who made the sofa made a promise. If they bought 
the warranty to repair damage to a sofa, and if they did not use that warranty in seven years, they would get credit for $180 of merchandise from that store. The husband and wife talked about it and decided to get it. Seven years went by. Seven years. And the couple did nothing except live in their house and sit on that sofa and probably slept on that sofa. And at the end of the seven years, it was still in good shape. They never used that warranty. So at the end of the seven years, the husband had forgotten that such a warranty and promise had been made. But the wife remembered. So they went back to the store where they bought the sofa and they took their receipt with them. This wife was also very good at keeping receipts where they needed to be. And they asked for the promise to be kept. And the store kept their promise. And so the couple walked all around the store and they saw that bookcase. They bought it on sale. And to this day, whenever that husband walks into that room and sees that bookcase, he remembers the power of a promise. Easter is all about the power of a promise. On Sunday morning, just a few days following the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, at least five or six women went with spices to the tomb. And they went there to show love to a man who had loved them with all of his heart. They gathered the spices and they went to anoint the body of Jesus. But as soon as they got to the tomb, they realized that something was wrong. The body wasn't there. Now, that's a problem. Dead people usually don't move. They sort of say, this sort of of stay where you put them. And then the problem got worse. Then suddenly there were two men who, as the Bible says, gleamed like lightning. And they were frightened and they were bewildered. And the two men asked them a question about their remembering. They said, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Do you remember do you remember his promise? Because sometimes promises aren't worth a dime. Someone says something to you, promises something to you, and it carries no weight. They won't follow through. Have you ever had a person make a promise to you that they did not keep? Well, sure. We all have. You see, a promise is only, is only as good, only as powerful as the one who makes it. There's a lot of unbelief in those pages concerning the resurrection of Jesus. 
The women had heard the promise that Jesus spoke a number of times. He would, be, he would suffer, he would be crucified, and the third day he would raise again to life. Now, they must have heard those two things because they went to the tomb, but they must not have heard the third thing about coming back to life. And after all, dead is dead, right? I, I've never attended a funeral where I expected the person in the coffin to raise up and begin a conversation with me. So when those five or six women arrived there at the tomb, they reacted with bewilderment. And then, of course, the apostles. When later the women went to them and told them about him not being in the tomb and what the angels had said, well, we read this. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. But that is not the end of the story for the women or the apostles. So after the chastisement of the angels to those women, that word that began, remember what he told you, it concludes with a brilliant word. Then they remembered his words. Uh, memory issues are a big thing in our world. Well, I'm wondering, you, you ever walked into a room knowing that you needed to go there for something, but then once you get there, you don't know what you're there for? <laughs> it hits early, doesn't it? Uh, my mother has had memory issues for quite a few years, and now she is in a memory care unit in the Phoenix area. And every few months, I travel from Denver to Phoenix to go to see her. And though she remembers my bald head, there are many things that have left her memory. So this last trip I made in February, we are talking about music. My, my mother has a beautiful voice, always has. She sang in the choir for decades. So I said, Mom, you remember that song, Amazing Grace? Or How Great Thou Art? And she would say, well, you know, I, I've never heard of them. But then I started singing the first two words for those hymns, and she's right there. Right on tune, right with all of the words. She remembered. I knew she would. I got a feeling that when those angels are speaking to those women, when they recounted what Jesus had spoken to them those many times, that he would suffer, he would be crucified, and he would be raised again, that they would remember, and they did. In a sense, my job as a preacher is like the job of the angels to help you remember what Jesus said. It is God's job to make you 
or others into believers. See, this remembering wasn't simply an academic exercise. It wasn't something just to unsettle their brain. No, it was for their soul. It's for their life. Remembering means faith. It means trust. One of our folks here at Ascension, who's an engineer, sent me a little poster that we posted in our narfex and on the landing and our lower level. It's a picture of a cross that's rising high above a valley. And the words are this. Only Jesus could bring, could build a bridge to heaven with just two pieces of wood. To remember the words of Jesus is to remember what he said about the purpose of his life. In our text, it says this. He was to be delivered in the hands of sinful men and to be crucified. In the Gospel of Mark, it tells us that he came to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. The prophet Isaiah, when he speaks about God's servant, says... He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Just think of that. All your sins, all the evil, that has come from your mouth, or your hands, or your eyes, or your heart. And all of that has been received by Jesus Christ upon the cross. Every step that you or I have taken away from the will of God in our life was carried to the place of payment. To the cross. Remembering tells us that this repentance of our sin, this sorrow over our sin, means that Jesus receives that sin upon himself. A promise is only as good and as powerful as the person who makes the promise. And God made a promise, a sure promise, where he tells us the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, purifies us from all sin. Remembering means faith. It means trust. Now, you have buried some of your loved ones, right? How are they? Because this day means everything to them as well as to you. We have this thought in this world today, dead is dead. I'm going to tell you that's wrong. No. In Jesus, dead is becomes alive. Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me shall never die. Paul connects the events in the life of Jesus to the promise that he has made when he writes this, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess and you are saved. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, Paul mocks death. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, grave, is your sting? You see, we have God's victory in Jesus. See, he has promised that. And his word is sure. To remember his words is to know that our God will do what he has promised. Today, I offer to you this promise of God. That he will forgive your sins, that he will establish your faith, that he will live, give to you an eternal day that has no end in heaven. I invite you to believe, to trust in Jesus. It's Easter. It is God's day to keep his word once again. Whatever form has prevented you from living with this Easter confidence, whether it has been your pride or your unbelief or your despair, it all can be forgiven. Be restored. Be changed. Then they remembered his words. What a change. What hope. A promise is only as good or as powerful as the person who makes the promise. God has made the promise. His words are sure. Live in that promise this day and every day of your life. In Christ's name, amen. Well, in our prayers today, the flowers of the altar were given by Don and Marilyn Loptine, because this past Tuesday, the 26th, they became grandparents again. Anna He was adopted by Andrew and Kayla, and we're thankful for that event. We offer prayers on behalf of others as well. We begin our prayers. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love that had such action and such meaning. Your death upon the cross, your resurrection from the grave allows us, Jesus, to understand cleansing and hope and life I pray that this Easter is a day filled with glorious joy because of you and your promises made to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there are many people throughout our world who suffer greatly on this Easter by war and conflict by malnutrition, thirst. Lord, I pray that you provide for them in good, wonderful ways. For those in Haiti, for those in the Ukraine, for those in the Mideast, Lord, may your resurrection allow them to also be resurrected with hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, I thank you that you are gracious in keeping your word to your dear people, the Loptines, 
especially Andrew and Kayla, and especially that you have given to them their precious daughter, Anahi. Lord, may this family be established in you. May they ever be able to grow in love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious Lord, may your strong and healing touch be with Brooks Pasha. For Michelle Delk's friend, Jennifer, battling leukemia. For Jenna Cableman, Trisha McCulley, Doris Roney, Joyce Dowdy, John Rowling, and Judy Kester. Lord, for these people and many others, may your hand gently as well as strongly rest upon them. For I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior who has risen. In fact, he's risen in need. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go forth in peace in the name of our Lord. Amen. Amen.